the antichrist spirit, the devil, he's not the only one with a plan in these days. God has a plan and he is setting the stage. I believe he is setting the stage in his church. He is raising up the body of Christ to display the glory of God in a way that we have never seen before. The Bible says that the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former house. And personally, I believe that that means that the glory of God upon the end time church is going to be greater than the church that we see in the book of Acts. And the church in the book of Acts was very powerful. The Bible says that uh, they said, who are these men that have turned the whole world upside down? These men were having global impact and the glory of God was on full display. And I believe that the end time church will be even more glorious than the book of Acts that we will see once again, the world turned upside down by the gospel of Jesus Christ and the glory of God. We want to be in on what God's doing. So now I'm going to read you a prophecy in Amos chapter nine. Uh, Amos chapter nine. And if you read my book, my book is actually, um, this is one of the main scriptures in my book is out of Amos chapter nine. So I want to start by reading in Amos nine eleven. Amos nine eleven. It says on that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down and repair its damages. And I will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old. So I'm going to pause right here. This verse began to be fulfilled uh, in the book of Acts. The, it really began to be fulfilled when Peter preached the gospel at Cornelius' house. And we saw the first Gentile convert uh, be filled with the Holy Spirit and brought into the kingdom of God. That's really when this scripture began. Um, and we can see that in Acts 15, that when there was a descent, you know, the, much of the early church was Jewish and there was a great disagreement. They were very uh, skeptical of all these Gentiles that were being saved and they weren't circumcised. They weren't following the rituals of the law. And so there was this big disagreement between the apostles. And so they had a meeting. And this is Acts 15. You can go read it. And James stood up and he said, no, this is this, what we're seeing happening, all these Gentiles being saved. This is what Amos prophesied. This is what the prophets of old talked about when they said that the tabernacle of David would be restored, that it would be rebuilt. And if you study the tabernacle of David, what's so amazing about it is that David brought the ark back to where it should be right in the, in the midst of his people. And he instituted 24 seven worship. So the tabernacle of David, it's all about number one worship, but number two, there were actually Gentiles that joined the Levitical priesthood that joined this 24 seven worship team, essentially that they would worship day and night and offer sacrifices um, in the presence of God, there were Gentiles and you can go study about Obed Edom. And it talks about 60 something of his relatives that they joined, they followed the ark and they joined this Levitical priesthood and they began to worship. So this is what it's talking about when he says that the, in that day, it's talking about this day. In that day, I will raise up the tabernacle of David. What is this talking about? That Gentile people from every nation, every tongue, every tribe, and every race will begin to worship before the ark of God, before the glory of God. It's talking about unveiled worship. That Gentile people would begin to carry the manifest glory of God and that God would raise up a breed of worshipers, people that had been redeemed, people that had been touched by the glory of God and the presence of God that he would make for himself from every nation, a group of worshipers that would worship him in spirit and in truth. So that's what God is doing in these days. And I believe that as we're approaching the end of this age, this is the culmination. We are seeing the culmination of the tabernacle of David being restored, that God is saving people from every nation, tribe, tongue, and race. Yes, we see God's attention being turned back to the Jewish people as Israel's been restored and the temple's about to be rebuilt. I believe that God is about to um, repoint his attention to the Jewish people. But as of now, the tabernacle of David is being rebuilt. There are Gentiles. God is saving people. Even in the Middle East, God is saving people. And that's what it actually goes on to say in verse 12. This is Amos 9, 12, that they may possess the remnant of Edom 
the, as I was reading this other day, this just began to hit me. Let me tell you, they will possess the remnant of Edom. What, who will possess this reign of David? It's talking about the messianic reign of David, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, the King of David, uh, that he would possess the remnant of Edom, Edom. And if you study it, Edom was the descendants of Esau. And these are the ones that have always throughout history hated the Jews, hated the Jewish people. These were the enemies of Israel. The Edomites were the enemies of Israel. And it says even in Edom, there's a remnant. There's a remnant that Jesus would possess, that he would take hold of the remnant of Edom. What does this mean? This means even amongst all these enemies that we see rising up against Israel, even in this day, even amongst those, God has saved for himself a remnant that will be born again and brought into this tabernacle of David, this, this restoration, this uh, new birth experience in Christ, that even in the midst of the craziness and the judgment and the chaos that we see going on, even in the midst of that, God shows himself merciful, that even amongst Edom, the enemies of Israel, even amongst the terrorist groups that are coming against the Jews, that are slaughtering Jews, even amongst Hamas, Hezbollah, even amongst them, there will be a remnant that will be brought into the tabernacle of David. And we can see it happening. You can read, there's an article out that there are literally people in Gaza that have had visions and dreams of Jesus that are being born again. There are people in Iran, people in Syria, that are having visitations that are being born again, swept into the kingdom of God. And they're becoming a part of this prophecy that even a remnant of Edom, those who hate Israel, those, those nations that have come against the people of God, even amongst them, God will be merciful and save a remnant of them. And we're seeing it happen. And it goes on to say that they may possess the remnant of Edom and that all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord who does this thing. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him who sows, sees, so, ho, sows seed. The mountains shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it. And I will bring back the captives of my people, Israel. I want you to listen to this part. He says, he's talking about an acceleration that's coming. He says, the plowman's going to overtake the reaper. There's such an acceleration coming. And he says this, I will bring back the captives of my people, Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink wine. They shall make gardens and eat fruit from them. And listen to this verse 15. I will plant them in their land and no longer shall they be pulled up and uprooted from the land that I have given them, says the Lord. So I want you to, I want you to catch this, this whole prophecy that he's talking about. It finds its culmination in this verse 14. I will bring back the captives of my people, Israel, and I will plant them in their land, never to be uprooted again. This is exactly what we saw happen in 1948. I believe that 1948 marked the beginning of the fullness of this prophecy coming to pass when he began to bring back the people of Israel back to their land to never be uprooted again. That was a totally supernatural occurrence that the Jewish people were spread out all over the world and supernaturally by a miracle of God, he brought them back to their land. He planted them and the Bible says that they will never again be up rooted. They will never again be uprooted from the land of Israel. So that's why, like I talked about in the beginning, all these nations putting pressure on them to make a two state solution. Let me tell you, it's not going to happen. God said, when I do this work, when I bring them back, they will never again be uprooted from the land that I have given them. It's not going to happen, folks. It's not going to happen. And I believe that that, that miracle that we saw in 1948, and continued in 1967 when they got back control of Jerusalem. I believe that that is a signpost telling us now marks the beginning of this prophecy that the plow man is going to begin to overtake the reaper. There is such an acceleration coming and this acceleration is multifaceted. And I encourage you to, to get my book because my book goes in detail about this prophecy and the acceleration that's coming. One of the things recently that I've been thinking about 
that I believe that this pertains to is Matthew 24. Matthew 24, he says, Jesus said about the end of the age, when you see the fig tree bud again, which many people believe that the fig tree is a type of Israel being reborn as a nation. He says, when you see Israel bud again, he goes on to say, this generation will not pass away before all of these things take place. So it's almost like Jesus was saying, when you see Israel reborn, that generation, in that generation, there's going to be such an accelerating of all things that in that one generation, all these things will take place. Because we've seen many generations in the past that have seen certain signs of the end times. They've seen wars and rumors of wars, or they've seen pestilences. They've seen bits and pieces, but he said there's coming a time when Israel will be reborn as a nation and there's going to be such an acceleration that that one generation will see the culmination of all these things take place. And that's why the rapid acceleration, like I talked about, the rapid acceleration of technology that we've seen happen is also part of what Daniel prophesied. He said, this book will be sealed up until the end of times. And at that time, travel will increase and knowledge will increase. There's so much knowledge increasing. There is an acceleration of knowledge that is taking place. And you can study it out. There's actually a study that's been done that knowledge is like, it used to double every like hundred years and now it's doubling every like two months. Knowledge is increasing. There's an acceleration. There's a culmination of all things taking place. Jesus said, behold, I am coming quickly. When you see all these things taking place and this generation, the generation that we're living in right now, we have not seen one end time sign. We have seen all of them. The technology is there. Israel is there. The temple is about to be rebuilt. The Jews have control of Jerusalem. Uh, All nations are coming against Israel. Jerusalem is like an immovable rock. We're seeing the red heifers uh, being bred. We're seeing, I mean, literally, there is everything in place. We're seeing the the chips being implanted into people's brain. We're seeing uh, the return of the Nephilim, which I'm not going to get into all that, okay? But we're seeing signs in the heavens, signs in the stars. This gener- We're seeing everything that Jesus talked about in this generation. And there is an acceleration. Now, what does this acceleration mean for you and I? If you are a believer, I talk about this in my book and I'm not going to get super deep into it, into it on this teaching. I encourage you to, to get my book to learn more, but part of the acceleration that the Lord spoke to me in 2020, part of this verse finds its fulfillment in Galatians chapter six. He says, those who sow to the spirit will reap eternal life. That word eternal life in the Greek, it's talking about Zoe life, a God kind of life that they're going to begin to reap something supernatural, the supernatural life of God being manifested in a way that we've never seen. Those who sow to the spirit, those who sow to the spirit, there's going to be a accelerated harvest As you sow to the spirit, what does that mean? As you read your Bible, as you pray, as you plug into your local church, as you begin to win souls, as you begin to do what God's called you to do, as you sow to the spirit, there's coming an accelerated harvest of the eternal life of God, of the supernatural life of God being manifested in you and in your life. A super, the, the, the supernatural power of God, the life of Christ that we saw so evident in the early church in the, in the book of Acts, that same supernatural Zoe life of Jesus being manifested. There's coming an acceleration of that into the body of Christ. The antichrist system, all that is being accelerated, but also there's an acceleration of God's glory coming in and upon those that are born again. So I encourage you to press into this. What does this mean? We should sow to the spirit more than ever. And expect God to accelerate all things. Everything that you've been believing God for, let me tell you, there's an acceleration. God, this is the year. God is going to fulfill every promise that he's made to you. Has God put a vision in your heart? God's going to begin to bring those things to pass. In Habakkuk, he said, write the vision, make it plain. Though it, though it seems to tarry, in the day that it's appointed for, it will not delay. I will perform it quickly. It will not tarry. Whatever God has spoken to you to do, now is the time to do it. 
Now is the time to do it. Don't put it off for another day and expect to see this acceleration in your own life. God will accelerate your ministry. God will accelerate your business. God will accelerate the salvation of your lost loved ones. God is going to begin to accelerate everything concerning you if you will believe it. Grab a hold of what I'm saying by faith and begin to study out Amos 9 and take it as a word for yourself. God is restoring the tabernacle of David. People are being born again and God is putting his glory on display like never before in these days. And so I want to encourage you if you're watching this video and you're not sure which side of the spectrum you're on, today is the day to make peace with God. If you're not sure that you're born again, if you are not sure uh, if the rapture were to take place today, do you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you would be going up? If you're not sure, I want to give you an opportunity right now to make the greatest decision of your entire life, which, which is to make Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Or maybe you've done that in the past. Maybe you used to be serving God. But if you're being honest, you've gotten away from the things of God. Maybe you've backslidden. You've gone back to your old way of life. Or maybe you're just lukewarm. Jesus said, if you're lukewarm, I will vomit you out of my mouth. These are not the days to be lukewarm. So if you are any of those three categories, I want you to pray this prayer with me. And I want you to commit your life wholeheartedly back to Jesus Christ to make him your Lord and Savior and make a commitment today that from here on out, I'm going to be on fire for God. I'm going to be all in for the things of God until Jesus returns. Make that decision today. So if that's you, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Pray this from your heart. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Jesus, I believe that you died for me and that you rose again for me and that you are coming back for me. Lord Jesus, let me burn for you all the days of my life and raise me up as a sign and a wonder of your glory in this final hour. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, I want to hear from you. Faith has action. If you prayed with me, I want you to type in the comments of this video, I prayed the prayer. And as I see those comments, I'm going to continue to pray for you as you walk out your new life in Christ. And so I want to encourage you also, if you would like to sow into this ministry, uh, to sow into the preaching and teaching of God's word uh, in this final hour of time, I want to thank you in advance to those of you who are going to do that. And as a way to say thank you, I will send you a copy of my book. For anyone who sows any amount, I'll send you a copy of my book that I've been talking about on this broadcast. It's called A Glorious Bride, and it's about the role of the end time church. And I believe that it will totally change your life. So I will mail you a copy of that my book just as a way to say thank you so much for standing with us, for standing with this ministry to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And also, if you want to learn more about uh, end time Bible prophecy, I have a whole playlist on our YouTube channel that I will link right here. You can check out and learn more about Daniel's 70 weeks and the end of this age. And until next time, God bless you.